I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for a long, long time, and I've always enjoyed popping open packs and testing my luck. I've spent years buying and selling cards and amassing a collection, but now, we throw it all away. This series aims to embody the ride, as nothing beats the feeling of pulling the one card you need or an expensive chase card that everyone's looking for. With $50 every other week, we have three goals. Build a collection, crack packs, and win games using only sealed product. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Restart! I'm back, and damn, last week was huge. I'd just like to reiterate how much fun the deck was. I could not believe our pulls, but now we have a very consistent deck, and instead of more combo pieces, we just need more staples. We only really need Raza and Ryu as an out to Dragoon, though Draco Berserker of the Tenyi is also a decent out, but we would just end up using up our Zoro summon, so that's just a consideration for Draco Berserker. And in terms of funding, this week is, um, hilarious. It's time to do some math, boys. We have our base $50, along with $8 that we won from winning last week. We have a leftover $16.50 that we didn't spend. We sold 6 cards at 70%, being the CR Beat Cop at 15, the Evil Twin Kiss -a Kill with a Lilla for 18, a Lilla for 850, and two sign up minings for $7 together. What that leaves us with is. Uh, $123. Now let's open some goddamn cardboard, boys and girl. Going in order. $30, $48, $45, free with Phantom Rage. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Uh, it'll probably be like a selling piece, or maybe I'll do it for a giveaway. Uh, I'll, I'll decide by the end of the episode. I'll see how much it's worth, and if it's actually gonna give us some kind of advantage in the series, I'll probably sell it. If not, who knows, giveaway time. So as you guys know, we got a lot of money. $123 to be exact. And we spent a lot of money. $123 to be exact. Just to save some time, I'm taking everything out. Uh, we've got our Cyber Dragon Infinity, still the best looking one in the set, don't at me. This is probably going to be the most interesting opening, and depending on what we get, there's the bit of an issue where we start to snowball. I mean, I'm not gonna complain, this is fun. But uh, I hope you guys don't think it gets boring or anything. We're gonna, we're probably gonna alternate. I'll do two Phantom Rage packs with uh, one Dual Overload and one Megaton. Well, Mega Pack, sorry. Um, out of Phantom Rage, we're just looking for Raz and Ryu, so once we get that, we're pretty much done. But I would not complain about, hey, Gagigo, but you know what? What does this do? When this card is special summoned, you can send one random card from your opponent's hand to the graveyard, then each player draws one card. It's, it's in consideration. I might side it. Strangely, Stranglelanius, sorry. Is it Strangolanius? It's Strangolanius. Dual Avatar Return, Charge into a Dark World, Jack in the Hand, and Razen Ryu. We got <laughs> both of these right out the first pack. In case you don't know what Razen Ryu does, this is pretty much uh, some in the same way but using a win. And by the way, the attribute doesn't matter just because of the fact that we have Crowley and Crowley can change its attribute at will. So we're not going to be putting in Ran Ryu just to summon Razen Ryu. Out of this one, we get UA Man of the Match, Geonator Transversal. This might be a. Good little tech option. Mutant Expansion, Jaja, and Mutant Beast. Qinglong, uh, Palutena, Magical Broker, Jabbing Panda. Funny enough, I don't love Phantom Rage. Um, I like the Tri Brigades. I think Tri Brigades are an interesting archetype. But they seem really strong. Hinezumi Hanabi, Proofiness, the Tactical Trapper, Raiders Unbreakable Mine, Bloodness Reptolphin, and Dual Avatar Toes. <laughs> Jack in the Hand, Dual Avatar Return, Cupid 4. Infernity Paranoia. I completely forgot we're supposed to be doing two and one, so... Time to open some Dual Overload. And these are warps just as badly as the last time. I think we do um, two to the front to put the short print card at the end, and then we get Malefic Paradox Gear, Kinkyo Sukui, Cubic Causality, Abyss Actor Hyper Director, and it's a Link Monster. Union Carry. Oh! So here's an interesting one. Awakening of the Possessed cards just need to hit the graveyard. They don't need to be monsters when you send them. This is this is high in consideration. We'll see how we can make that card work. But for now, we get our Mega Pack. Honestly, the Union Carrier might... We might be able to find out some kind of tech with it. I know when it comes to um, Line of the Light Charmer... God, I forgot how big these packs are. There's like a few techs that you get. But we'll have to consider that Fury of Fire, World Legacy of Cliffhanger. You know what I still want out of this? I want to um, 
10 Thief Redoer, we got Borrowload X Charge, we got Gladiator Rejection. <sighs> Infinite Track River Stormer and Psychic Wielder, as well as Gorgon, Empress of the Evil Eye, and another Shatana. That... Nah, I don't think I'd run a second one. The, the one is good enough. I don't really usually want to draw into it, so... One more pack of Phantom Rage. Since we opened three last time, I'll just do one of this and then move on to Dual Overload. Somehow I always suck at opening these packs. Okay. Uh, another important card that can come out of this is actually... Uh, obviously, if we get... What's that one card called? Double A Zeus, we can run that. Dogmatica Ashian. I think that's literally the cheapest Ultra in the set, so I'm... Not even happy to get it, I'll be honest with you. Tri Brigade Revolt, free range monsters. That's a weird effect. Infernity Wildcat. Hey, Demo, you should be happier that you got an Ultra. Why would I be happier? The series is about buying and selling cards. I'm doing this because I'm cheap, not because I want. Cyframe Lord Omega. Um. <laughs> I'll see. Dynamiscus. Oh, that's, that's not bad. You know what? Maybe we can replace the Solemn with it. I'll, I'll put it over here. I'll put all the cards in consideration up here. Speedroid Marble Machine, Deck Lockdown, Dingirsu. Uh, I don't think we have a way to summon it, but that's not a bad pull. We've got another Mega Pack. This price, I really can't get these things open. We've got Draw Discharge. Who the hell is that? Spiritual Entanglement. So funny enough, I, I'm i opening this right after my, um, I think right before this. Maybe, do I put it in Nahata? I don't know. I'll, I'll consider it. Ashuna, Jesus. So we've got Time Thief Winder. Okay, not bad. Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid. Mm. Gizmek Yada. Not good. Unchained Soul of Rage. I love it, but we can't play it. And Fusion Destiny. As well as Crusadia Testament. Yu-Gi-Oh cards are Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And at this point, we can go into two more packs of Phantom Rage. God, these sets have been so good to me. But I think now is uh, when we lose all of our luck. Infernity Conjurer. Xyz Import. Gluttonous Reptolphin, and Raider's Wing. You know what? That's not a bad card. Uh, we can't play it, but it doesn't hurt to get it. Infernity Suppression, Infernity Paranoia, Infernity Wildcat, Dual Avatar Return. What the hell is that Infernity pack? One more Phantom Rage pack, and then we go back to Dual Overload. God, I wish you guys could see the amount that I cut out for my openings because of, like, <laughs> me not being able to open something. Raid Raptor Heal Eagle, GGGG, Proof Finesse, the Tactical Trapper, and we've got... Rock Band Xeno Guitar, pretty cool looking card, pretty cool. Charge into a Dark World, Jack in the Hand. Another Rosin Ryu, uh, maybe it might be a side option. I'll put it to the top, but I don't think we're gonna run more than one. Next we've got our Dual Overload. We're still looking for Selene, we're still kind of looking for Needle Fiber, but if we do get it, we'll probably see what we could do involving that. We've got Emerald, which uh, that's, that's also a card we could put into consideration. Synchro Transcend. Firebrand Hymnus. I always thought this card was really cute, but now I just think it looks like uh, interspecies reviewers. So, Y Strix, the best Blackwing card, and Condemned Dark Lord. Really cool looking card, not a good one. So we're not even like halfway done with all the packs that we're opening. I also just realized there's only... Sorry, I for some reason I just had a brain fart. Like I thought there were only five packs of each. Okay, we're like halfway through with the opening at this point. Is that all Gladiator Risk? No, just that. Uh, Guard Dragon Shield, Veilionix, Test Panther, it's a Gladiator Beast card. Sci <laughs> we just sold this card, but I mean, it's a money card. Kaina, Carl Anemone, and M Mega Clops, what the hell? I don't think we can play it. Marin says Crystal Heart, and the rest are. Oh, I forgot about these. I genuinely forgot we could get them. Oh my god. All these episodes later, we're playing Charmers, and 11 episodes in, we get our first Charmer Link. Thank goodness. The only thing that would have made that Charmer Link better is if we got Win along with it, but I believe Win is an ultra rare, so I don't think we're going to be getting her anytime soon. Mutant GB88, Banquet of Millions, Dogmaticism, Mutant Cry, and Joyous Melfies. I love them, they're babies. Tri Brigade Standoff, Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves, Rookie for Hire, and Free Range Monster. Another pack of Phantom Rage. God, I'm starting to feel like uh, Revs with his Tri-Brigade pack openings. Banquet of Millions, Mutant Blast, 
Gluttonous Reptolphin, Arcana Reading, and Prank Kids Meow Meow Moo, another card that we can't play. Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves, Charge into a Dark World, Mutant Fusion, and Mutant Clash. Back to Dual Overload. Oh man, I'm, I'm bending these. Wait, they're already warped, so it doesn't matter. As you guys know, it takes me forever to open any of these packs, so okay. Dangerous Fright for Nightmare. This card looks really cool. Some more. Oh boy. Okay. Trilog Trilogic. Herald of Mirage Lights. And Cyber Emergency. Remember when Cyber Emergency was a kind of expensive card because it was hard to get? I definitely remember. Tenny Spirit Mapura. Did we ever get this one? This might be new. Gladiary Sagittary. Rising Fire. Salaman Great Recurrence. Dark Factory of More Production, Dino Wrestler Giga Spinna Savate, Bye Bye Damage, Firewall XC Dragon, World Legacy Guard Dragon. Oh my god. Marin says Coral Anemone and another Mega Clops. What the hell is going on? Aloof Lupine, Glass Souffle, Marin says Cascade, Gladiator Beast United, something, Dino Wrestlers. Enough of that. Time for another two packs of Phantom Rage. We got Proof Finesse, the Tactical Trap, UA Locker Room, and oh my god, man. How do we get the best opening in the world last episode? Now we get the worst opening in the world. I really can't call it the worst opening in the world because like we already got a pretty good lineup of decent cards. It's just we didn't get what I wanted. That's the only issue. Tribrigato, Infernity Conjurer, and I saw the XEs and I thought it was double A Zeus. Infernity Suppression, 1 or 8, Stained Greaves, and another Razin Ryu. What, what do I do? Do I just put it with the others? We definitely did not need to open as many packs of Phantom Rage as I thought. I only got so many because I thought, hey, you know what? It's a common, and for some reason I feel like if we get a common, it's going to be mad hard to come by. We got White Mare, Cubic Dharma, Ferocious Flame Swordsman. Celestial, and it's a spell card. Oh my god, please don't be sign up mining. Witchcrafter creation. Witchcrafters are a cool idea, but there's no chance in hell that we can run them. So we've got Infirm Track Drag Shovel. You know what's funny? I've been opening Dual Overload and Megatons, hoping to get uh, Verte Anaconda with Dragoon. But I really doubt that's happening now. Neo Space Connector, good card, good card. Overburst Dragon, Speed Lift, and then the secret is... Danger Ogopogo. Ultra is a spell card. Successor Soul. And the last Ultra is another Appalooza. Um, we won't play a second Appalooza, but you know what? I appreciate the gesture. Thanks, uh, Yugi Gods. So last few packs. We got two packs of Phantom Rage left, along with one pack of Dual Overload and one pack of Megatins. So here's my concern. We got 12 packs of Phantom Rage, so statistically one of these should have a secret rare. Which can it be? This one! <laughs> I mean, I called it, I guess. Mutant Ultimus, Free Range Monsters, Ching Long, Paralysis, and Magical Broker. Hey, I mean, my wish has been granted. I got a secret. I just wish it was like <laughs> a Starlight Double A Zeus, I don't know. Now, when I bought these Phantom Rage packs, the guy at the locals actually mixed these up because, you know, they're math, so he, he kind of shuffled them. Now they've got Gigabyte, Mutant Blast, so maybe we could get something else good? Juju. Nerval, Standoff, Mutant Fusion, and Rookie for Hire. We've got one pack left of Dual Overload and one pack of 2020 Tin of Lost Memories. So the goal here is to get Verte Anaconda from this one pack and then get Dragoon from the other. We got um, Angry Cum Umbrella. Double Evolution Pill, Deck Lockdown, Malefic Selector, and the last card is... 3, 2, 1! Oh, damn it! Oh my god, I saw the link and I was like, oh, did we get... Um, well, I thought it was Needle Fiber, which I'm not going to complain about. Last pack, 2020 Tin of Lost Memories. Can we get the Destiny pack here? Even if we pull Dragoon at this point, I'm not sure if we'll actually play it, because... I, don't, I just don't think it's necessary. Koala Slot, Marin says Current, Marin says Sea Angel, Infinite Track Tunneler, Unchained Soul of Disaster, still my favorite deck right here. 
Madame Very. Madame Very. Secret is another pot of extravagance. Yo, call back to episode two of the entire series, pot of extravagance. I mean, hey, that's more money in our pocket. Next is Infinitrack Anchor Drill and the last card. You know what? What I'm going to do is um, this card I'm going to put upside down. We're going to look through the rest and then we're going to flip that at the very end. Infinitrack Anchor Drill, Cap Shell, Danger Feet of Strength, Pegasus Wings, Destiny Hero Draw Hand, Shatana, and Chimera T Rex. Oh, there was one more card Guard Dragon Cataclysm. So I can't complain about this opening. But now we see the the very last card that we need to get. Okay, Whew. let's let's get a nice deep breath in. We're gonna channel the good luck from all of my amazing IOC pulls <laughs> and get the target dragoon. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. I'm not that upset. I didn't think I'd get dragoon. I um, I'm not too upset. I'm not too upset by this opening because in terms of just pure like profit cards. We got a good amount, like, these four cards were most likely going to sell. I think um, sign-up minings are dropping right now, so most likely I'll be holding on to this for another few episodes at least. Uh, I don't know why. I feel like my camera is just off a little bit today. Um, this is what's important. We're, again, I don't know why I put multiple of these aside, because I'm probably not going to be running multiple. But we finally got our first Charmer link, and it's Hita. I mean, it's fine. Degusto Emerald, I'm not sure if that'll see play. Um, Omega, I'm not sure if that'll see play. But let's make some changes to the deck. Okay, so here are all the cards that we're dropping and all the cards that we are putting in. First of all, Nightmare Griffin. Without the Evil Twin Engine, we just can't really consistently make this, so no reason to play it. Transcode Talker was just a body, but I don't think we need those. And Five-Headed Link Dragon, while it... Very fun card. Uh, we only brought it out one time just to flex, so I really don't think we need it. Um, we're also dropping the three Dark Lord No Mores from the extra deck. First of all, these can actually be sold for a pretty decent price, I believe. Um, second of all, we're going first deck and we never really want to use Dark Ruler No More. I think there's almost no situations where I'd rather have this in my hand over something else. So, going in the garbage. Uh, we're putting these three cards into the side deck. The Awakening the Possessed Gagi go by. It's, it's okay. I mean... Most of the time, you don't want your opponent to send cards from their hands to the graveyard if they're just going to draw it back. I mean, in the end, it's just neutral. You end up sending two cards to the graveyard, special this out, draw one, and then when it hits the graveyard, you get to search another card. So it's it's okay. We're putting the Veiler in because there's just very few information. There's very few situations where we're actually going to be using this. And Phantasmia, while it is a good card, a lot of the times it's just another body on board, and we don't really need it. Um, this one's just going in the side. We still have another one in the main deck. Then for the cards we're putting into the main deck. We're putting in the one Razen Ryu. This is just an out to pretty much those monsters that I'm not good enough to get over. We're putting in the one Dynamiscus. We run enough trap cards to actually make use of this, and this could just be another monster that we can send to the graveyard to special something out, pretty much. We've got the one Union Carrier. If we can make it work, then it would be amazing. Um, the goal is equip one of the Awakening monsters onto probably Crowley because he can change his attribute. And then we're able to send it to the graveyard, maybe using um, maybe using Endymion. That way we would be able to get the fixing... We would be able to fix one card in our hand using Endymion and then we'd be able to get the search off of the Awakening card. Key to the Fire Charmer Ablaze. It took so fucking long. I wanted this card for so long. We still don't have win. Which would be a bit better here, but Hita's good too. Um, now we don't have to go into... Uh, we don't necessarily have to go into Proxy F Magician all the time if we want to send our monsters to the graveyard. And then we're running the 1 Omega. It could be fun to hand loop, but I doubt we'll be seeing much of it. The changes aren't as huge as last time, but you know, a change is a change and I'm looking forward to see how the deck plays. Um, we're kind of reaching the limit of this deck and most likely we're going to start going into Maximum Gold or something in order to open more uh, staples and hand traps and things like that. But for now, let's test out this build of the deck. Let's go, boys. Game one, and this is against Trap Tricks. Again. Bane of my existence. We get an all Charmer hand, which will happen a lot in this episode, and use Spirit Charmers to get Hita and Awakening. The draw off of Awakening gives us Nefarious Archfiend, but instead of shotgunning it, we hold it and decide to pass turn. 
Our opponent goes into Mermelio, which we solemn, and then we see Nadir's Servant come down. And Tiss attempts to pop our Spirit Charmers, but we chain it in order to get Area and a second possessed partnerships. On our turn, we draw our Brick Eyes Green Dragon and attack with Area and Hita, passing turn. Our opponent uses Mermelio, which we pop right away, and pass his turn again. With no monsters on board, we avoid summoning to set off a trap hole, and attack for game 1. Game 2, I can't even begin to describe this. Our opponent absolutely shows off their understanding of trap tricks and Dogmatica, pulling off a pretty impressive combo that ends with a large series of interruptions. While you can definitely attribute this to the hand drawn, you need to know what to do with that hand, and our opponent filling in every single monster and spell and trap card zone that they have, we lose game 2. Game 3 is another all charmer hand. We use Awakening to draw us Reliona and make Artemis in order to make our possessed partnerships live. We do use partnerships mid combo to blow up the Mermelio before our opponent can make Utopia, then use Nibiru to stop the Utopia from going off of an Ecclesia. On end phase, we use Twin Twisters to clear the board slightly. Reliona gets us Triss Magistus, and we use Crowley to equip Artemis and get Zorua. Zorua gets Trap Hold, so we attack and pass. We see the Dianea come down and make Utopia double, and with no interruptions, we take the L with Grace. Match 2 against Generators, and we go first. We set up Secret Village, and that's the game. I'm not kidding, he has 6 spells in his hand, and I have Secret Village, so we get Game 1. Game 2, our opponent goes first, using Pitora and Shmieta to get Madame Barry on board. Then using Generator Boss Stage to bring out the Dark Generator and 3 tokens, giving him an Omni Negate, 5 bodies, and a Negate for every monster I control. I do what I can, but after he clears our board and I draw into Droll as my top deck, the game is over. Game 3, we go first. We set up Secret Village and, say it with me folks, that's the game. I love Floodgates, don't you guys? Match 3 is against Ekorion, with his more advanced sealed only heroes, a deck that came out 6 years before this Charmer deck, but it's about equal in terms of power because Konami hates me. Game 1, our opponent pops off with a hero combo which we droll to end early, leaving him with just a Dread Decimator on board, and we decide not to waste the Nibiru on it. We start with Luna to see if our opponent has an Ash, then chain Spirit Charmers to search Area, Hita, and Awakening. We use Trismagistus to special summon Hita and get the draw for a second brick. Just because I'm playing Charmers doesn't mean you guys should. We bounce Dread Decimator and attack directly with Area, passing turn. I do have to say that I miscalculated the power of heroes and sadly got run over by our opponent summoning less than 5 times, which makes me unable to use Nibiru. We summon Luna and our opponent's monsters all go down because of Fusion Destiny and Luna, so we still have a chance, even better when we solemn our opponent's normal summon. Sadly, we run right into Torrential Tribute when attempting to close the game out, and with that, we make 101 and our opponent is able to stall the game with Liquid Soldier and Honest Neos. But a top deck for Endymion allows us to go into Toad, shutting down the Rota and taking game 1. Starting with a Dark Claw in game 2 really hurts us, and us starting with a Gagigo Bite in hand hurts just as much. We're able to painfully make number 101, but we have to banish every single card that we have in the process, just to get rid of Dark Law. This doesn't work out in the end as 101 goes down, but we draw into Riliona who's able to bring back Zoroa. Then we could special summon it back out using Possessed Partnerships. We have no links in our graveyard, so I'm forced to make Vahram and have a brain fart forgetting about the attack boost from Awakening. He top decks at Ecall and searches for a Stratos with another Stratos, then clears both of our boards. We draw Trismegistus and, sadly, this game is gone. Game 3 and our hand is quite painful, we're pretty much forced to end with a Crowley on board and two set Solemns. Our opponent uses Fusion Destiny, which we Solemn first, and then when I later attempt to Solemn the Polymerization, EDO just didn't let me, but quite honestly, this game was over anyway. Looking back to the replay and seeing my opponent's hand and set cards and my field, I hate to admit it, but even if I was able to use it, I had absolutely no way of winning, leaving us at 1-2. to two. So I'm gonna have to admit something here. Don't be upset, but I'm genuinely not that angry that we lost here. With a combination of the fact that I wasn't able to go into Toad or Boralode Savage uh, very easily this entire episode, and actually understanding our options, I have really zero complaints. Especially after doing so well for the last few episodes before this one. If there's anything I could say negative about the deck at the moment, it's just that it's not doing what I want it to as often as I'd like it to. The addition of Gagigobite and Razen Ryu ended up just feeling counterproductive, and the smart move would probably just be to side Razen Ryu by itself. I was attempting to also find a way to make Union Carrier work, but that just doesn't seem very likely with what I've got so far. I think the smart move here is to just continue opening packs for staples because that's what's fun, and maybe ignore Dragoon and Verte and Akanda at this point in favor of something like Maximum Gold for Ash. I also may reintroduce Ninoruru to the deck, since I realize its purpose now being a target for a Crowley and Artemis in Grave. I definitely had a lot of situations where I realized, hey, I could win right now if I had a target for Crowley to equip Artemis onto. 
Moving on, I've got a little something that I've got to share to you guys. Keep it low-key. A few little somethings, actually. I've officially decided on what the next deck will be, though for now it is a bit of a secret. I'm afraid I have to share that it won't be Machina despite me hinting at it non-stop. You guys will see when we get there, but aside from that, I'll now finally explain the New Game Plus system. With our deck finally hitting its ceiling, aside from opening more Genesis Impact for Zoroa, but I'm tired of that honestly, I'll explain how we'll move this deck into our next one. On episode 13, that's right, 13 in two episodes from now, we will have 10 duels instead of 5, and it won't end after two losses. Those 10 duels will each have something on the line. Every single win will give us $5 and one card that we can carry over into the next series. Though, if it's something that we're playing, then we have to have a second copy of it. <coughs> like the second Appaloosa we got. <coughs> After that as well, I will sell everything extra that we had in this series. That means everything not being played in the deck that we pulled up to and during episode 13. How I go around selling everything, that's to be decided between now and then. Though, I'd consider maybe an auction in my Discord, but for the most part, I don't think everybody wants to bid for a bunch of bulk. Either way, we have an end goal for now. Future series will have different end goals. When locals reopen, we'll have a different set of options for how we want to end the series, or maybe even something like a regional. But since that's just not how the world works right now, it's not really an option. The end of episode 13 will show which cards I carry over, and that will make it plenty obvious what my next deck will be. I'm looking forward to the coming weeks, guys, and I hope you are too. We've got a lot of stuff to sell again, so I've got my work cut out for me. For the question for this episode, I've got a lot of different things to ask, but here's what I want to ask. What do you guys think about the other sealed-only Yugi tubers, the ones that I've been facing so far? I've been working a lot with the Chu cast, the Pokémonarch, Demur, Tundra, and Ikorion, and I want you guys to give them the same love you give me. If you already watched them, what do you think? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Restart and for supporting the series. I'm Demo, and have a great day and or night.